Um, I'm Chris Straley. I am um, 44. I'm a psychotherapist. Uh, I've been practicing for about 15 years. Um, I live out in Hyattsville. I uh, have a husband of 20 years and I have three dogs and I raise bees. I'm originally from West Virginia, which is important to me, you know, that um, regional identity. I dropped out of college and I was living by myself at the time, so I sold everything I had, picked up two more jobs, saved enough money, and so then I bought a one-way ticket to Europe. I told my mother I was coming back in a month, but that wasn't, the, that wasn't my plan, and so then I stayed, I ran out of money, I worked on a military base as a civilian, and then I traveled uh, and used that as my home base for about a year. And so while I was working on Country and Western Night, um, this was during the time of Desert Storm, most of the, uh, my regulars had, were gone, they'd been shipped out. And then there was this guy there that had, um, we kind of made eye contact and flirted, changed, exchanged numbers, and so we talked on the phone for three days. And then after that, you know, it was kind of this very quick um, get together, move in. And then I had to come back to the States shortly, so we were trying to figure out if this was going to work. And so we had about a month and a half together, and then he followed me back to the States maybe three months later. I came to Whitman Walker uh, right out of grad school. I moved here from West Virginia. And I was at Whitman Walker for four years. I was at the Maryland site and a Bridgeback uh, site. Um, neither of those really exist anymore. And I left for a while and did some other things and, and therapy work, and I wanted to come back. Into therapy? Well, that goes back to my husband. Um, so, I dropped out of college the first time. I was a theater major and it just didn't fit. And so that's when I traveled, uh, met my husband. We, uh, we were non-traditional students. So we had to, uh, we moved, we both of us moved back to West Virginia. We worked as, um, we worked at Subway as a manager and a shift manager trying to get independent student status. And then we went back to school and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And uh, we had some trouble. We had some problems in our relationship. Uh, we didn't learn appropriate boundaries from our family, and we didn't have them with each other. We would get really angry and violent with one another. And so we decided that we needed some help. And so we went to our university uh, guidance counselors, and we worked with a wonderful woman who was an ally to the LGBT community. And it changed our relationship. And I figured out in that moment that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a gay therapist. Sorry. <clears throat> Not sure why that's evoking that for me. <clears throat> Growing up in West Virginia as a gay man, it's very isolating. <clears throat> and alone. And so what I wanted to do was to be a gay therapist for gay clients, specifically gay couples. But my walker makes me feel like I'm part of a family, um, part of a larger purpose, like I'm making a difference in the world. They, they tend to be around those themes, right, of, of making a difference and feeling connected. And I think that those are very important to me as a person, and I believe that they're, that's really important to the agency. I think it, for me, it, it means both seeing us as members of the community, right, of the LGBT community, members of Whitman Walker. I think that's also true for us seeing our clients, right, that we see them in in all of their individual ways, right? That they're not lumped together, they're not just, they're not just faces. They're people, they're all special, individual. And the idea of being seen, you know, we use the term being seen in psychotherapy as a way of being known, right? That we are both seen, we're held, 
We are known. I know you. I relate to you. I'm connecting with you. That's what that means to me. Even though we've made a lot of progress, you know, I know that it's going to continue to be a struggle. I mean, we've been struggling with race relations for hundreds of years in this country, and despite uh, the civil rights movement in the 60s, we're still struggling. I, I think that's going to continue in the LGBT movement as well. I think it's always going to be about pushing that boundary and to be more included, to be more respected, to be seen and understood in all of our dimensions, whether it's about um, gender, expression, orientation, race. Um, you know, I would like to say something specific that I want to see in 10 years, but I think it's just more progress, right? More, more understanding, that's what I want to see. More understanding, you know, that we tend to struggle in this country. You, you know, we'll see radical change and then the pendulum will swing in the other direction. And so, uh, you know, I know that's gonna be a part of moving forward, but in the end, I really just wanna see more understanding between us as people.